Hello and welcome back to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and in this video we're going to take a look at the filter activity. Actually, not this video. We're going to take a look at the for each activity in this video, not the filter activity. If you like what you see in this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's jump right in and kind of take a look at the example. We've already taken a look at in this series how to do a simple copy activity as well as how to do the get metadata activity and how to read some of the outputs from that. So if you're interested in either one of those or creating link services or data sets, make sure that's why we're doing this as a series. Make sure to go back and watch those previous videos in this series. All right. So we're going to jump right in and take a look at the data that we're going to be working with. Previously in this series, I gave you some files that you could download and upload to your account within Azure, your data lake, right? If you're following along, then you should have those. If not, make sure again to go back to that series. If you can't find them, um, let me know and we'll try to find that for you. But over here under my data hub, if I go in and take a look at my training folder inside of internet cells, so inside of the training container, inside of the internet cells folder, I have a list of different files here that I want to do something with. Maybe I want to process those files. Maybe I want to take the names of those files and load them into a table in a database that we can do something with later. I don't know, but I have a list of files and I want to do something with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage the Git metadata activity to get a list of all those files right there. That's going to put them into an object or into an array. Then we're going to pass that object into the for each activity and we're going to iterate over or we're going to work on one row at a time on each of those different files. And within that, we can perform some kind of activity. Now, in this video, I'm focused only on how to get the list and how to kind of set up and configure the for each activity. In my next video, we're going to kind of wrap this little section up. I'm going to bring in the stored procedure activity and show how we can pass that as a parameter into the stored procedure and write that to a database. So that'll be in the next video. Look forward to that one. So I'm going to go back over to the data hub. And from the data hub, what I'm going to do is I probably want to go ahead and create a data set real quick. So I'm going to create a new data set that points here. So we've done this before. I'll go through this section a little bit quicker. I'm going to do integration data set. I'm going to go ahead and connect to my data lake gen two account. I'll do a CSV file here and then I want to go ahead and give this a name. So we'll go with Azure. In fact, what we're recalling them. Oh, I wasn't. Okay. So I wasn't actually putting in the name of the storage account. Usually I do when I name them, I'll put in the name of my storage account that I'm connecting to. So Azure ADLS, and then the name of the storage account, we'll just go with Azure storage. And then for the actual container I'm connecting to, it's going to be internet cells, right? That's going to be the folder. The link service that I'm going to use is the default link service. Again, we talked about this in a previous video. And then I'm going to point to that directory. I'm not going to be pointing. Notice that I'm not pointing to a specific file here. I'm going to be pointing to a directory location. So I'll click on the folder, go into training, internet cells. There it is. That's what we were looking at a moment ago. Again, I'm not going to select a file. I'm going to only connect to that right there. First row is header. And then for import of schema, I'm going to go ahead and do none. And then we'll go ahead and go down to the very bottom here and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right. So when I click OK, that's going to bring me here and we've created a data set. Again, we talked about data sets previously, so I'm not going to really spend too much time on this. But now I'm going to go back and we're going to create the pipeline, right? So we've created a couple pipelines in this series. And so I'll go back over to the integrate hub. In the integrate hub, I will click and create a new pipeline. I'll call this one because I'm super creative, the for each activity. So I'll come over here to the right and I'll go ahead and zoom in on that so you can see that just a little bit better there for each activity. And what we're going to do inside of this pipeline is we're going to use the for each activity. So I'll close that up. And then the first thing that I need, though, is I need to get a list, an array that has all of those files in it. Right. So similar to what we've done before, I'll pull in the get metadata activity. And then in the properties here, I'll go to settings and I'm going to point to the data set that we just created. 
Now I know that that data set points to a folder and so I want to return a list of all the files in that folder. So if you remember from our previous demo, I can click under field list and click new and then I can click the drop down and I'm going to choose child items. There we go. Now obviously there are other options there as we've talked about before. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to take the output of this and I want to pass it into the for each activity, right? So the for each activity, if you've worked with a for each maybe inside of SQL when you're writing T-SQL or inside of like an SSIS package, the same concept will apply here. There's a set of activities that I want to perform to every file that's in that list. I want to take the file, I want to write that information to a log table, I then want to copy the file somewhere, I then want to run it through some ETL. When I'm done, I want to send an email. Then I want to go do the same exact set of steps to the next file that's in that list. Write it to you know the, the audit table, copy the data over, ETL, and then send an email. So if you have a series of process steps that you want to walk through, the for each activity is going to be great for this. Microsoft actually recently updated this transform a little bit too, so I'm glad that I'm just now getting around to this. So I'm going to grab the for each activity, I'm going to drag that in, and then in order to be able to read the outputs, super important from this get metadata activity, I need to go ahead and connect these two together. So using a successful precedent constraint, which means that the get metadata activity must complete successfully before this will run, I'm going to connect these two together right there. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add an activity. Well, actually, before I add the activity, let's talk a little bit about the settings. So we can come down here and give our for each activity a name. This is going to work over each row that's inside of that get metadata activity. I can then click on settings here. And this is where I'm going to identify the items. What does it mean items? It means where's the array? What is the object that it's going to be working over? What is the list of files, right? Well, we know that list of files is being dynamically created with the get metadata activity. So what I want to do is work over each row. How do I figure out what those rows are? This is where we do it. So I'm going to click inside that box and then I'm going to go ahead and click on dynamic content. And then over here, because I've connected the two, I can see under activity outputs, all of the different activities or all the different outputs that are coming from the get metadata activity. This is the one that I want, child items. So I'll click right there. And then up here in the top, you will see it's at activity, the name of the activity dot output dot child items. There we go. Now that's it. That means now the for each activity is going to iterate over each one of those items. I'm going to go down to the very bottom here and click OK. And we're not quite done, right? Because the for each activity is going to work over each row that's inside of that list. But what's it going to do? Well, right now it's not going to do anything, right? We haven't given it anything to do. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on the little pencil icon right here. And that's going to take me inside of the for each activity. And inside of the for each activity, what I want to do is I want to do something very simple here. I want to go ahead and I am going to put in a wait activity. Now I could do a lot more here, but I want to keep the video short. Sometimes these videos turn into 25, 30 minutes and it loses people's attention. So I'm breaking these up into smaller pieces. Um, so I think I'm going to stick with just a basic wait activity. Now, if I go back over here, and let's see, if I look over here, you'll notice we have 11 items that are in this folder. So this wait activity should technically run 11 times, right? So if I come back over to the for each activity, my pipeline here. So if I come back over to my pipeline, um, I'm just going, if I run this right now, what it's going to do is it's really not going to do anything. It's going to just Let's see if there's a better way to keep this simple and keep this quick, but also show the expression here, because how do I now reference, right? So what happens is the for each activity has those 11 files in it, that object, and it's going to go to the first file. How do I reference that first file name? So there's a couple different things I was thinking. One I was thinking is that we could use like a variable and we could pin that string to the variable, but I don't want to get into variables here in this video because then I need to adequately explain it if I'm going to do that. So I think what I'm going to do instead is 
I am going to briefly talk about what that would look like by calling a random store procedure, and, and I'll show you what the code looks like. But I'm going to delete this in just a moment. In my next video, my goal is to show you this. Actually, that's what I was going to do in the next video, but I at least want to kind of touch on it a little bit here before I end the video, and it's still only been about 10 minutes. So if I open up the stored procedure activity here, and I go over to settings, what I want to do is, oh, this isn't pointing to a database, is it? So let me just kind of create a new stored procedure here. We're going to make one up and I'm going to call it file name, right? So this is going to be the file name. So what I'm doing is I'm pretending. So we're going back to make believe world. I'm going to pretend that I have a stored procedure that I'm pointing to. And this stored procedure is going to be what we're going to use in the next video, which is insert files into a database table. So how do I get the exact file name that I'm iterating over within the for each loop? That's what I want to show you. Well, what I can do is say, all right, I have a parameter here that's part of that stored procedure called file name. I'm going to give it a data type of string. And then under value, I'm going to go ahead and click dynamic content again, right? Sounds familiar. We've been there before. So I'm going to go ahead and click on dynamic content there. And what you'll notice is that when I come into the dynamic content window, I can click for each, which is the current item. Now, this is going to have some similarities, by the way, to like Power Automate. If you've worked with flows there, it's also going to have some similarities to Azure Logic Apps as well. But this is going to say, hey, grab the current item that the for each activity is current. Remember, we're inside the for each activity. It has that object. It has that array. It has that list of items and it's going to iterate over each one. Well, then what I have to do is say, okay, within that item, the row that I'm currently on, the current item, it might have multiple columns. So now I have to specify exactly what column I want. And so the column that I think I want here would probably be name, or it might actually be, no, I think it actually is name. I'll show you in just a moment though. So the name is good. Now, this is actually one of the small parts that Microsoft has not yet added the IntelliSense for. So I'm looking forward to when they do, but I'm going to show you how to get that exact property. So, well, Mitchell, if I were pulling from a table and I had five columns, how do I know its name or address or what? Like, how do I know exactly what it is? I'm going to show you that now. But this is how you reference the exact item that you're currently iterating over. So I'm going to delete the stored procedure. I'm just going to leave a wait activity in here so that this runs successfully. And then I'm going to go back out to my pipeline here. I'll go ahead and collapse the for each activity. I'll collapse that. You can always expand that. This is, by the way, new capability that was recently added. I think it's really cool. Great job, Microsoft. Love it when they make these good updates. And I'm going to go ahead and run this right here in debug mode. Now, when I run it in debug mode, this is a great way to kind of look at your code, verify, validate, and make sure things are working. So I'm going to run it in debug, click refresh. And what you're going to see is that the get metadata activity ran first then the for each activity ran and then if we were to count this that should be 11 executions meaning even though the for each activity didn't do anything with any of those items that were in the list it just ran for each item we can see that it's working correctly right that part is great so in this video you learned how to get a list how to pass that list into the for each activity to the items and then how to run it now what i want to show you though before we're done is how do I know it's at item.name or at item.file name or at item.date or whatever those attributes might be that are in the list? How do I know that? So in my example, remember the list was being generated by the get metadata activity. So if I go down here to the output of the get metadata activity and I click right there, I can see the child items array or that object. Now within that object, notice that we have a property called name. That's it. That is how I know that it's dot name and not dot something else. If I want to return also, there's actually multiple properties here. The other property for each item. So you can think of this as a row, right? You can think of this as a row and you can think of this as one column and that is another column. So when I tell the for each activity, at item, the current item that I'm currently iterating over, I, that that's not that doesn't suffice. That's not sufficient enough. I have to say, hey, for the current item that you're currently iterating over, get the dot name property or get the dot type property. So depending on how you generate that list, whether it's from SQL Server, from a lookup activity, from a get metadata activity like I did here, one way to kind of debug that 
and figure out exactly what the properties are is you can run your pipeline in debug mode and then you can just come down here click on the output and see what it looks like right pretty simple pretty easy now this video didn't go quite as smoothly as I was hoping it would because I didn't have a plan to show you the item the current item but I didn't want to combine the for each and the store procedure in one video because that would just make the video too long and people just they they don't want long 30 minute videos so for the people that's what we're going to do in the next video I'm going to show you how to actually complete this we're going to get that for each activity we're going to take that data I'll give you a SQL script you can download that will create a table I'll give you the store procedure script and we're going to write this actually to a table in a database and you're going to see the full end-to-end -end example because this is really really cool all right that's it that is the uh, end of this video as always thank you for watching if you like the video I'll see you in the next one